This is an excerpt from a recent Power Up webinar examining how fast is fast measuring computer system performance. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. Well, now that we've studied sort of the general specs of the system, let's take a look at specific performance results for Final Cut, and we'll tackle Premiere in just a minute. The 2023 M2 Max, let's set the speed of rendering inside Final Cut to 1, just so we can compare. The M1 Pro, the MacBook Pro, is a little slower, 1.3 times, roughly 20% slower. But look at how much slower the 27-inch iMac is. It's six times slower than the Mac Studio. The 2013 i7 MacBook Pro is 13 times slower. The Mac Mini, not the 2023, but 2018, with an i7 chip is 14 times slower. It's a dramatic difference in performance, especially for rendering, as we move off of Intel and into Apple Silicon speeds up to five, six, seven times faster and more mean that you're not waiting on rendering as long as you used to. If we look at export times, the Mac Studio is 1x, the MacBook Pro almost the same speed, a little slower, but look at the i5 27-inch iMac, six times slower. Again, the shift to Apple Silicon means you're spending less time waiting for the computer to calculate stuff. Let's make this really dramatic. I had 40, 40 ProRes 4x4 files that I wanted to create proxies for. How long did it take to create 40 4K proxies? It took the Mac Studio a minute and 50 seconds to create those proxies in ProRes proxy and three minutes to create them using H.264, though I would recommend ProRes proxy because it's easier to edit. The Mac Pro Mini, the M2 Pro Mac Mini, was pretty darn close, and so was the Mac Pro. Not as fast, but close enough as to be pretty much the same thing. But look at how long that iMac took. 22 minutes versus 2 minutes, 10 times longer. Or look at the Mac Mini, 35 minutes versus 2 minutes. This is why the Apple Silicon is so important to media creators. Look at the amount of time you're not spending waiting. If we take a look at Multicam, which really takes advantage of the bandwidth of your storage, we see that if we're dealing with, say, 20 streams, I haven't hit the speed of a single hard disk to do 20 seconds of ProRes proxy. However, uh, latency will kill me. If I do ProRes 422, Okay, that's going to require something with a lot of horsepower. I'm up around 1,000 megabytes a second. That's going to be more than a hard disk RAID. That's an SSD or an SSD RAID. And if I was doing ProRes 4x4, which I did just simply to exaggerate, that's going to take almost the full bandwidth of Thunderbolt. This is one of the reasons I recommend editing with proxies. Look how little bandwidth proxies require. They still require an SSD. Again, it's the latency issue but they don't require a whole lot of data coming up. I mean, the PCIe SSD would meet that. Now I decided to take a look at exactly how many streams I could get in multicam out of Final Cut. If it's H.264, I could get 10 streams on the iMac, 10 to 15 streams on a single media engine inside the M2 and the M1, and 35 to 40 streams on the dual media engine inside the Mac Studio. For ProRes Proxy and 4.2.2 and 4K, I, I can't measure the top end. I, I don't have enough clips. I got it to 50, and I finally gave up. 50 on the MacBook Pro, 50 on the Mac Mini, and 50 on the Mac Studio. So I shifted to 8K. I can do three streaming files on the MacBook Pro, four on the Mac Mini, and five on Mac Studio, but that's with it connected via Thunderbolt. If I move the media to the internal drive, I can get 6 on the MacBook Pro, 8 on the Mac Mini, and 11 on the Mac Studio. You may remember Apple in its marketing said they could stream 22 streams of 8K video on the M2 Ultra, which is probably a true statement because I can do 11 with the Mac Studio with the M2 Max. But what Apple doesn't say 
is that requires you to store that 8K media on the internal storage. Because if you store it on a Thunderbolt attached drive, the most number of files you're going to be able to get is five because then you slam up against the speed limit that Thunderbolt has. So if you're doing really huge numbers of huge files, you're going to need to spend more money with the internal storage because Thunderbolt won't be fast enough to support it. But for HD and for 4K files, really as many cameras as you shoot, you'll be able to edit all of them inside Final Cut. There's one other thing I want to look at, which is video compression. We still need to take our projects, export it, and compress it into something for posting to social media or somewhere else. So I compared Apple Compressor and Adobe Media Encoder and Handbrake. All the green boxes indicate the fastest time for that column. The Mac Studio took a minute to compress a 4K ProRes file. I used the default social media setting for uh, YouTube. Everybody was compressed at the same data rate. They were all compressed with the same frame size so that the numbers are comparable. It took the MacBook Pro roughly double that amount of time. It took the 2018 Mac Mini, not the 2023 Mac Mini. I didn't have it for testing at that point. It took an hour and a half for that, it took thir half an hour for the iMac, and 45 minutes for the 2000 MacBook Pro. Compare half an hour on the iMac versus one minute on the Mac Studio. If I switch to H.264, which I need for YouTube, it's three minutes on a Mac Studio and 20 minutes on the iMac. The iMac has hardware acceleration to the Intel chip, so it's quicker. If I take a look at HEVC, again, similar times. The M1 chip is about half the speed of the M2 chip, and I think, though I don't know, I think it's because the M1 chip only has one media engine while the M2 Max has two media engines, and it seems like that makes a difference. If I look at Adobe Media Encoder, again, I'm starting with an 8K source file. I'm down sampling it to 4K so that the processor has to do something. And I'm compressing it into ProRes 422 and H.264 and HEVC. Premiere takes roughly four minutes, regardless of what format I'm compressing into, compared to double that for the MacBook Pro, and 20 to 30 minutes for an iMac, so faster. If I compare Handbrake, which again, remember, is essentially open source, Apple Compressor takes, say, three minutes for H.264, Premiere takes four minutes, Handbrake takes 21 minutes. If I'm doing HEVC, it is three minutes and five minutes and 38 minutes. The speed difference between Adobe and Apple software versus the FFmpeg is dramatic and you spend a whole lot less time waiting for your stuff to get processed. This was an excerpt of a recent power-up webinar called How Fast is Fast? Measuring Computer System Performance. For the complete version of this online training, please visit my store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 355. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's almost 2,000 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.